Hi, and welcome to the first module in Lecture 9, covering continuous probability distributions. If you've listened to the previous lecture, or watched the previous lecture, on discrete distributions, you've pretty much gotten all the main points that have been covered in this um, lecture, except for one, which is the reason why continuous distributions are different than discrete distributions. The short answer is, they're not much different. Um, they're different in one really, and only one kind of technical way, but it turns out this one particular way has a large effect overall and justifies separating out this entire section on continuous distributions into its own lecture and its own chapter in the book and so on. So what's this difference? Well, this difference, simply put, is that for discrete distribution, the probability mass function describes the probability of drawing any particular value in the support of the distribution. So for instance, we did a bunch of examples with say rolling a die. There's six values in the support of the distribution. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And for a fair die, it assigns a probability of one sixth to getting each of these six values. An unfair die would also assign a probability to each of these six values. Those probabilities might be different, but we could still always assign a probability to each of these six discrete values. That gives us a nice, clean, natural, intuitive way of thinking of probability distributions. They assign the probability of drawing any particular value. That's not the case for continuous distributions. Why? We can see it actually pretty easily. Consider the domain 0 to 1 inclusive. Right, here's a segment of the real line. And let's say that you want a probability distribution over this real line, over this segment of the real line, and this distribution will have support over that entire line. Okay, well, we know some things. We know that if we look at the total probability of a distribution over the line, then it should equal to be equal to one, because if we draw something from this line, it must be somewhere. Similarly, um, we know that the probability of something outline this, outside this line should be zero because we said the support is only this line. So outside the line should have no chance of being drawn. But what about any point in this line, say one half? Well, we might say, okay, maybe it's uniform. Maybe there should be an equal chance of each point in this line, in this, in this line segment. So one half should be the same as everything else. But what's that? Um, if it's any positive number, right, then any finite number, then if it's the same finite number for every point in that segment, if we add up all those finite numbers, since there are an infinite number of points in this segment, we're going to get infinity, not one. So we have too much probability here if we assign a finite number to each individual value. Um, we can think about it a little differently. What if instead we started cutting up this this um, segment? We know the probability is one of being somewhere in this segment. Um, we might think the probability of being between zero and a half is less than that, but you know depending on what the distribution was, somewhat less. Um, same thing, somewhat less. We keep going like this, you know, for a while. If you remember the idea about limits back in part one of the course. We could write, you know, in general, a limit like this, and keep making these smaller and smaller and smaller, and get bigger as n gets bigger and bigger and bigger. These line segments get smaller and smaller, and presumably there's less probability in each of these line segments. But in the limit, um, well, it goes to zero to zero, so there's actually no segment there at all, and we might be able to define the probability of being at zero with that limit, but it's just ill-defined. I'm not sure what that limit would be. Um, we know it's less than this probability. Does it go to zero? It can't go to zero, because if it actually went to zero explicitly, then if you summed over the entire line, you'd get zero, right? So that wouldn't be very helpful. Um, so it's gotta be something between zero and a finite number, and that's a little poorly defined. And that, in a nutshell, is where the complexity in continuous distributions comes from, so you can't call each the probability of drawing any particular value in the continuous distribution um, a fundamental thing. It can't be a fundamental probability because 
the chance of drawing any particular value can't be finite. <laughs> um, now, it can't be exactly zero either, because that doesn't really work very well. So there's something in between. There must be a different kind of concept we can use to apply to this. Now, if you've gone through the calculus section um, of this course, and this chap and this particular lecture needs calculus, you cannot do continuous probability distributions, any kind of remote rigor, let alone real rigor, without understanding calculus well, and particularly integration. So if you've skipped over the calculus part, but are here anyway, stop, go back to calculus, and look at and look at least on the um, lecture involving integration because we're going to do a lot of integrals. Well, we're not going to do a lot of integrals. We're going to talk about a lot of integrals in this in this lecture. But if you have gone through that stuff, you recognize an in-between sort of idea between zero and a finite number, and that's the idea of an infinitesimal, a tiny, 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 tiny little delta x. Um, and the limit as it goes to zero, we can sum those things. We can sum over those things to get the area under a curve. If you remember, we had curves, and we said, if you want the area from here to here, how do I do that? Well, I can take little triangles, sorry, little rectangles, and add those areas up. And as the width of the rectangles goes to zero, my sum will closer and closer approximate the real area. And the limit, it will be the real area. This is a very similar kind of idea to continuous distributions. If I wanted the um, chance of being in any particular area, and as it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, I'm adding up more and more of those by the same kind of logic in which you add up little areas of rectangles to get the whole area under the curve, you can add up smaller and smaller bits of probability to get the probability in some range. So we're going to have a very close correlation relationship between calculus, the integral calculus, and continuous probability distributions. And that's going to drive this entire lecture and the entire subject of continuous probability distributions. And it's going to allow us to deal with the differences between discrete distributions, which have a nice, clear, intuitive meaning, and continuous distributions, which have a little less clear meaning. Now, before we go on to actually doing some of this stuff, I want to mention one more sort of concept. We're not, as we said, going to be able to actually specify the probability of drawing any particular value. This is not going to be possible in a continuous distribution. However, we are still going to specify probability distribution functions that are going to provide the relative likelihoods of drawing any particular value. So for instance, if the PDF of some function, sorry, the PDF of some distribution um, assigns some um, probability of say 1 to 1 1.x1 and say 1 half to, to point x2, that does not mean that the chance of drawing x1 is 1, nor the chance of drawing x2 is 1 half. It does mean that the in some kind of rough sense, the chance of drawing x1 is twice as much as the chance of drawing x2. These are relative likelihoods in a rough sense. In a rough sense here, more explicitly, we're going to be able to use these relative likelihoods in the PDF to determine what the chances of drawing a particular value of the random variable x that occurs in some area, in some domain. So, for instance, if we had some subdomain zero to uh, one quarter from that previous one. This, the probability distribution function is going to help us, help tell us what the chance is of drawing the value of x between 0 and 1 quarter. The way we're going to do it is we're going to integrate the PDF here um, from 0 to 1 quarter to get us the sum chance of being in that range. So it's just like the discussion of integrals in the calculus. We're going to take this PDF that's not describing anything actually um, intuitive, right? It's not saying the actual chance of drawing a number is, you know, one. It's giving a relative likelihood, but by taking these things, which sort of give us the height of the curve, and taking the limit as the distance between them goes to zero, so integrating them over the range, 
we'll get the chance of being somewhere in that um, in that range from zero to one quarter. So going back to what we talked about in, in integration, the area under the curve is directly tied to the probability of being in some range. Um, and this was, we're just talking through this right now, and the next module will give you explicit um, definitions for all this stuff more formally. But the key things to keep in track of right now as you're starting this lecture is the main and really only difference between discrete distributions and continuous distributions is that in discrete distributions, you specify the chance of drawing any particular value in the support of the distribution. In the continuous case, for continuous distributions, you specify the relative likelihood of drawing different points and integrate across some region to give you the probability of drawing a number in that region which is well-defined. So again, the probability of drawing a particular value is not well-defined. The probability of drawing a particular value in some actual region, some, we would say non-zero measure, some, some actual region of space or whatever the domain you're doing you're dealing with is, the probability of drawing any particular value um, in that region is a well-defined number. And the PDF, the probability distribution function, helps us understand what that value what that value of drawing a number in that range is. And even though it's not as concrete as drawing a particular value, if you make the range small enough, we can get pretty concrete probabilities of drawing pretty discrete, not discrete, but pretty discrete, um, pretty um, uh, con constrained areas, and thereby make reasonable statements about what the chance is of getting particular numbers. Okay. So that's it for this module. And the next module will make this more formal. So if this was not clear, don't worry about it yet. The goal of this module is just to give you a sense of what we're going to be doing. Everything else in this module, um, in this lecture, will follow fairly directly from the discrete, the arguments in the discrete lecture, replacing sums with integrals and discrete probabilities with continuous probabilities. Thank you very much.